Hello and welcome to TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. We have reached the last Sunday night of September's month-long salute to our star of the month, Paul Robeson. We have two Robeson movies on the docket tonight. Up first, one of the last films of Robeson's career and a picture he long regarded as his personal favorite. From England's Ealing Studios in 1940, The Proud Valley. In many ways, The Proud Valley parallels John Ford's classic, How Green Was My Valley, released a year later in 1941. Like Ford's film, The Proud Valley is set in a Welsh coal mining village and tells a poignant story of a community of miners struggling to keep their jobs and support their families. This British production adds another layer to its story by centering it around the character of a black man, played by Paul Robeson, who comes to the village looking for a job. Initially, he's embraced by the community on the strength of his beautiful baritone singing voice, which lands him a place in the local choir. I want to cross over into Cambrough. His bond with the locals changes when he takes a job working alongside them in the coal mine. The Proud Valley is a celebration of the spirit of the working class, making it a story particularly well suited to Paul Robeson's politics. Robeson was many things, an enormously popular concert singer, a brilliant stage actor, a movie star, but all of that took a back seat to Robeson's political activism. He was a pioneering civil rights leader and a tireless advocate for trade unions and workers' rights. Robeson went to great lengths to make the Proud Valley under challenging conditions. It was produced in Britain shortly after the outbreak of World War II in September of 1939. As Ealing Studios wrapped the picture, London mobilized its anti-aircraft guns and blackouts went into effect. Robeson went to the set each day before dawn and returned home each night by way of an underground tunnel. It was a harrowing time, but Robeson believed the film was worth the risk. From 1940, produced by Michael Balkin, also with Edward Chapman and Simon Lack, The Proud Valley. After finishing The Proud Valley in 1940, Paul Robeson acted in only one more movie, a 1942 anthology, Tales of Manhattan, produced in the U.S. by 20th Century Fox. He regarded that film as, in his words, very offensive from a racial point of view, and it became the last time Robeson acted on screen. He did narrate one more film, a controversial 1942 documentary, Native Land, which the FBI labeled as communist propaganda. By then, Robeson's criticism of racism in the United States and his public admiration for the Soviet Union had already drawn the attention of J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. After Native Land, Robeson chose to step away from the film industry, sensing work on movies in the States would prove to be one battle after another. He continued to have a successful acting career on stage. In 1943, he gave a widely praised performance in a Broadway production of Othello, which ran for nearly 300 performances and remains to this day the longest running Shakespeare play in Broadway history. Up next, we'll put a wrap on our Star of the Month salute to Paul Robeson with a documentary about Robeson's extraordinary life released in 1977, just a year after he died. Stay with us for the tallest tree in our forest next on Turner Classic Movies.